Hello, my name is Ray, and today I'm going to talk to you about the latest trends and state of machine learning in perception. This is the earliest part of the autonomy stack that uses raw sensor inputs to understand the driving environment around us. So what are we going to learn in this section? First, we'll talk about what is the perception problem. Next, we'll talk about different solutions to perception. Then, what are the open problems in perception? And then finally, how to train your own perception stack with the L5 kit. So what is perception? At a high level, perception is about creating an encoding of the driving environment that can then be used for a downstream task such as motion prediction and planning. This is an example of our perception system. You can see a scenario where the self-driving car is just driving down a road. There are cars on the side of the road represented by the blue bounding boxes. Uh, from the left, you'll see some pedestrians shown by purple bounding boxes. They have lines coming out of them showing which direction they're headed and how fast they're going. There's a traffic light indicator at the top right showing us the state of the traffic lights ahead. There are some gray boxes in the distance telling us they're moving objects, but we don't know what they are. And finally, there are some red outlines. These are polygons that show us static objects such as bushes and buildings. To generate these type of outputs, we need a perception stack. This is usually some collection of algorithms that take in a set of sensors and other information to produce the type of outputs we were describing. Some examples include LIDARs, cameras, and radars as sensors. LIDARs use laser beams to provide accurate depth information. Cameras mimic the vision system of a human eye. Radars tend to provide the most accurate velocity information of moving objects. These are nowhere near all the possible inputs, but, you can, uh, but these are the most common ones. We typically need, also need calibration and localization to us about the location of the sensors with respect to each other and the location of the self-driving car in the world. Some of the first modern perception systems for self-driving cars was conceived around 2007 in the DARPA challenges. They were primarily geometric computer vision based methods based on handcrafted approaches. In 2012, after the conception of ImageNet, we started seeing a lot more image-based deep learning methods replace geometric computer vision methods. A few years later, when other sensors became more commonplace, the image-based machine learning methods transferred over to other spaces such as LiDAR and radar point clouds. Up to around that point, I would call this state perception 1.0, where perception was a large collection of geometry and machine learning based methods, and they were assembled into a complete perception stack with a huge amount of glue code. Today, we're seeing perception becoming much more end-to-end, -end, with few fewer models handling more inputs and producing more outputs. This is what I will call perception 2.0 and where we're headed. Let's dig a bit deeper into what we call perception 1.0. As previously mentioned, there are typically many types of sensors and we can map them to many tasks. For example, we can perform tasks such as detection, segmentation, and depth estimation with either cameras, LiDAR, or radar. A typical perception system will then fuse together outputs from these tasks in some pipeline. Note, this table is really just an example of the types of tasks that exist. In reality, there are many more types of sensors and tasks. We'll just go over a few examples in this tutorial today. Three D detection with cameras is one of the most common and important tasks in perception. There are typical approaches that operate in point space or voxel space. On the left is a method called pseudo lidar that has recently produced state of the art results in camera based detection. This approach first generates a dense depth map from images and then uses 3D LiDAR detection methods to localize objects. Another type is to generate voxel-based feature maps from cameras directly and then use geometric-based volumes to produce predictions. This is the DSGN method shown on the right. Another type of task is panoptic segmentation. This task produces a per pixel classification for each type of object and for every instance of an object, fusing semantic and instance segmentation. Standard methods for semantic segmentation, such as DeepLab, and instant segmentation, such as mask are seen in, can be fused together to produce state-of-the-art panoptic segmentation results. Camera depth estimation is another important problem in perception. 
There exists many such methods for different configurations of cameras, such as mono, stereo, and multi-view. This example shown here removes the constraint of the structured camera geometries. The MV's S-Net uses the idea of a differentiable homographic warping layer to produce a 3D cost volume, which then then can be used to refine a dense depth map. Mirroring 3D detection of cameras, we can do the same with lighter point clouds. The state-of-the-art methods here tend to combine point space and voxel space representations again. Voxel-based methods involve aggregating point information into fixed grids and then applying 2D or 3D convolutions in image-based deep learning methods. This tends to lose fine-grained information such as locality of points that can e easily be retained in point-based methods, however. Point voxel fusion methods where the point features that are appended to voxel features give the best results today. LiDAR segmentation is typically done by either converting point clouds to range images and then applying 2D semantic segmentation methods or partitioning points in Cartesian or polar coordinate systems and then applying convolutions to produce per point classifications. So what are the problems with Perception 1.0? One issue is that models based on single modalities don't take full advantage of the complementary properties of sensors. For example, LiDAR has excellent depth information but can't see color, while cameras are the opposite. In this example scene, a pedestrian and a cyclist are moving very close to traffic and edges of a wall. It will be very difficult in LiDAR space to separate the precise points that belong to the humans versus the walls. However, from the camera point of view, it should be very easy to separate them. Intuitively, fusing these signals early on should produce much better results. Another challenge is the fact that com combining many models requires significant glue code and heuristics such as threshold tuning. This makes scaling and optimizing the stack very challenging. The bottom diagram shows an example real perception stack that fuses many LiDAR and camera models together. You can imagine the complexity of the code and infrastructure required to tune, update, and deploy this kind of stack in production. Next, keeping these problems in mind, let's move on from single modality models to multimodal solutions. One of the most famous examples is f.net. This model uses the outputs of 2D object detection to carve out frustrums in the LiDAR space and then produce point classifications and 3D detections on top of these frustrums. This is a great example of taking advantage of the strengths of detection in RGB color space with the accurate depth of information from LiDAR. Another example of a multimodal solution is fishing net. This model tries to treat all sensors equally by mapping them to the same space with 2D components. The map features are then aggregated to produce top-down or bird's-eye view semantic heat maps of the scene. The model also aggregates temporal frames for each sensor and then produces a sequence of short-term predictions that can then be used for raster-based downstream tasks. As a last example of multimodal fusion, here we show a network that fuses LiDAR and camera inputs to simultaneously output 3D bounding boxes and dense depth maps. This model shows that the same type of complementary advantages of f.net can be achieved with an early fusion method. In addition, adding auxiliary loss predictions such as depth completion can actually help the network generalize. So what are the challenges with these multimodal methods? One problem is that they're not generic. They typically rely on a fixed set of sensor inputs and do not allow scalable development of perception when the sensor is updated, which can be as frequent as when new hardware replaces older ones. As another example, let's say we want to build an autonomy stack for a car running on high quality sensors, but later we want to lower the cost to run on budget sensors. The same models will not likely work Additionally, they'll probably stop working if one of the sensor inputs fail. For example, a camera LiDAR model trained together will typically not work when either of the sensors is missing. Models are also heavily tied to the physical property of the sensors. For example, the majority of LiDAR models today have an implicit assumption on a high-density LiDAR and the ability to infer structure from LiDAR alone. What if we want to deploy models on sparse LiDARs? 
So for the next generation perception system, we can distill down to a few objectives. First, we want the stack to be end-to-end -end trainable with multiple inputs, outputs, and auxiliary tasks. These outputs should then feed directly into the planner. This will allow us to avoid heuristics and glue code. The stack should then be agnostic to sensor architecture and the physical properties. It should fork together whether we have no LiDAR, sparse LiDAR, or dense LiDAR. This will allow us to scale to multiple platforms. And then lastly, each sensor or modality should be independently trainable, and the performance should increase strictly when fused. This ensures that the stack can still function when one or more sensors fail. We're calling this type of perception system Perception 2.0, and building this at Lyft. So why do we need this kind of system? One challenge we face is that in order to scale autonomy systems to a large fleet of vehicles, we'll need to build them with cheap sensors. We need to experiment with which sensor configuration really gives us the best performance, perhaps ones with sparse LiDAR or mono vision or stereo cameras or something in between. As an example, we perform these type of experiments by sweeping across different sensor modalities and trying to find an optimal set. This is shown in the diagram on the left. The plot on the right shows an experiment where we did this. We built first a modeling modal model by building a vision-only model, then a LiDAR-only model, and then finally fused them together. We show that overall performance is greater than either of these modes individually. These are all early stage experiments and there are many open challenges in building this type of system and really presents an exciting opportunity for ML in perception. With all the recent advances in machine learning, We've really come a long way since the early days of handcrafted perception systems. However, there's still many challenges that we only briefly touched on or didn't discuss today. First, many self-driving cars demonstrate a high quality perception today, but they're really typically using expensive sensors that would be hard to mass produce. We need our models to be sensor agnostic. We're working on solving this problem at level five, but the challenge very much exists. Second, I want to emphasize that multitask optimization with a large amount of data is very difficult, and we need to find solutions that doesn't require manual loss or data balancing. This is an open problem today. Lastly, we typically think of the objective of optimizing perception is perfecting individual tasks such as localization. However, the true optimization target is really the performance and behavior of the pl uh, planning system. These two objectives often don't overlap, and we need to figure out how to build perception and planning together. If you're interested in learning more or want to train your own perception model, please check out our L5 kit to help you get started. You can also take a look at the Lyft Level 5 perception data set below.